This is my 1972 Series 3 Land Rover, and unfortunately, I have broken it. Let's start it up. Then if I put it into gear, let out the clutch, you can see we are not moving anywhere. My speedometer is moving. Put it in fourth gear. You can see it thinks that we're moving. And if we look under the vehicle, you can see the prop shaft is turning, which means I've probably broken one of the half axles. Series Land Rovers and Defenders have open differentials, so that means that power will go to the wheel with the least resistance. So if one of the axle shafts is broken, it's just spinning that broken axle and you can't put any power to the ground. But to get the Land Rover back to the workshop, I can engage four wheel drive, which will give this truck front wheel drive, which is at least good enough to get it back to the workshop. I can push this button down to engage four wheel drive, or if I pull the transfer case back, I put it into low range, that also turns four wheel drive on. So now if we put it in gear, we are able to move. I have the Land Rover on the lift now and I need to find out which axle is broken, but there's no way to do that without pulling them out. But luckily we don't even have to take the wheels off. We can just pull the axles out from the center of the wheel. These bolt heads take a 5 16 Whitworth socket This side is intact, so let's check out the other side. This side should have pulled out as easily as the other side did. And the axle probably broke at the splines in the differential, and now those are binding trying to get this to slide out. but I won't be able to remove the differential with the axle shaft slid into it, so I will have to get this loose. There we go. We can see the shaft is broken off at the splines. If we compare this side with the other side, you can see how much is broken off inside there. For the next step, I need to get the differential out. That way I can get the rest of the pieces of the axle out of there clean the housing out and make sure I get any metal shavings out of there. To do that, I need to undo the prop shaft first and I only have to undo this side. The other side on the back of the transmission brake can stay. Once I have this side unbolted, I'll just hold that out of the way somewhere. Then I can take out the bolts around the perimeter of the differential and remove it. All the nuts are taken off. I'm going to put a couple slightly back on. That way I can loosen the differential and I don't have to worry about it falling completely out until I'm ready for it to. If we take a look inside the differential, this is on the side that broke. 
we can see the broken piece inside of there and that needs to be pushed out. I don't want to push it that way and have it go into the differential, so I need to push it from the other side back out this way. If we look down inside there, there's a shaft that runs through the middle there. So I can't just drop a big punch in there and hit it out. I'm going to have to get a screwdriver that can go along the sides of that shaft. That time, it came out pretty easily. Here's our broken piece. Since the half axle on this side broke, I am going to replace both of them. That way, hopefully, I won't have to worry about this again on this truck for a very long time. Seems like my differential is okay. So I'll clean this up and it can go back in the housing. I'm not going to just put my gasket up. I'm going to run a thin bead of sealant around it. Now I need to put the new axle into the flange. So I'll pop the cap off. Now I need to remove the cotter pin and the nut. Now I can just tap the axle out. And there is a little seal on the end, so make sure you replace those before you put the new one on. I'm going to clean this up real quick. I have the flange all cleaned up. I'm going to push in my new seal. Insert the new axle.
and put my nut back on. Now this only gets tightened to about 10 to 15 foot pounds. So not very much. And then don't forget to put a cotter pin in. Now I can put the cap back on. And it's ready to go back on the Land Rover. Before I put the axle back in, I'm going to glue the gasket on. Now I can slide the axle in. And the vehicle is in neutral so that I can turn this and get the holes lined up correctly. Now I can do the same on the other side and then put the oil back in. Okay, I think I had a camera failure there, but I took this square plug out. I used an 8.916 socket to do that. I put my oil in. I used the bags, which make it really easy to put oil in your rear ends and your transmissions. And now once it started to run out a little bit, I've put my plug back in. That's going to be it for today. My Series 3 Land Rover can go back on the road. You can really see what a good and simple design this was. I didn't have to use any jacks. I didn't have to take the wheels off. If you can get the truck into a position that you have access to the differential, this is a job that you could do in the bush, in the forest, in the desert, wherever your Land Rover has broken down. There's probably an endless amount of videos that I could make with my Series 3 Land Rover. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.